Welcome to the Kentucky History Channel, where we strive to bring you all the Kentucky history content you want and you deserve. Kentucky is a part of all of us, and we plan on covering all the history we can, from Pike County to Fulton County, from Louisville to Harlan. Here on our YouTube channel, you can find many videos dedicated to different events, people, governors, and places in Kentucky. There's something for everybody. While you're here, if you like the channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you get notified anytime new Kentucky history is available. And if you want to support the channel, we have a Patreon page as well, or patreon.com slash kyhistorypod. Uh, welcome back to the Kentucky History Podcast. I'm your host, Jameson Cable, and joining me as always is David Kirkpatrick. How you doing? I'm doing well, you? Doing good. We're uh, rocking and rolling here. We've got a good topic we're going to talk about. One that people might be surprised that we haven't done yet, but it's time to do it. Some Mercer County history, right? That's right. It's a good time for it with the year being what it is, 250 years old. I know people are probably tired of hearing me say that, but 2024 but is the year. <laughs> yeah, and you know, that's coming right up. It's really, really literally knocking on our door here in June. Um, so a lot of stuff's going to be happening in Harrisburg for the next uh, little bit. So make sure you get out there and uh, check it out. Um, so we, we can dive right into it. Um, Harrodsburg, or I'm uh, oh, sorry, Mercer County, is right. um, one of the early counties of Kentucky. Uh, but without getting into too much details about it, we kind of have to start off with a little bit of a disclaimer. You know, we know James Harrod came to Harrodsburg and so forth. And we've had some episodes about James Harrod and his uh, settlement and so forth. So if we do gloss over him just a tad, don't don't worry. Don't worry. We, we've done, we've covered him greatly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so where do we start with Mercer County? Well, you know, the, the thing that people tend to point out is we're celebrating 250 years of uh, Harrodsburg and Mercer County as we know it. But of course, there were people who had, had lived in central Kentucky, including Mercer County, hundreds, thousands of years prior to that. And uh, you know, we think of the Shawnee that's the tribe that's there when Herod and the settlers first arrive in 1774. But really, it goes even further back than that. Prior to the Shawnee, by a couple hundred years, were a group called the Fort Ancient. Uh, and they were mound builders. And, and some of those villages and remnants of villages and things like that have been located in Mercer County, which is, which is kind of neat. But when we think, again, of Mercer County, that history leads us up to the point of Herod and the 30 men he led down the river mostly Pennsylvanians, but a good number of Virginians as well. And uh, Herod, of course, was no stranger to Kentucky. He had been on a surveying trip the year before in 1773 with Thomas Bullitt and uh, took some time off after that surveying project around the falls of the Ohio, which is Louisville today, to scout out a place for settlement. And uh, this was, uh, I had someone argue this point with me recently. They said, well, Boonesboro was first, right? No, Harrodsburg was the first permanent settlement in Kentucky. And uh, June 16, 1774 is the date. What Herod does, he and this group of men make their way down the Ohio River and pretty nervous about the whole thing, to be honest. They even had one uh, member of their party that turned back on them. And Herod was afraid others were going to. But uh, he, So they, they get back in canoes from, from camp that night. and just It's hard to uh, tell everyone else in the canoe or, you know, the, the dugout that you're not going when you're in the middle of the Ohio. Uh, so <laughs> they floated that night down the river. And uh, you know, that was the easy part because you're going down the Ohio River, but then you've got to come up to Kentucky. And they land at a little place that on the map today is called Oregon. Uh, They're in Mercer County. And they come up to the crest of the hill, kind of where the Salt River is. And uh, kind of come down almost where 127 is today. So Harrodsburg is founded. They begin building cabins and uh, they begin surveying the land. They're at a place uh, surrounding a big spring and everything seems to be going pretty well at first. Um, but it's not too awful long before violence kind of breaks out between Virginia and uh, the Shawnee. And we have what we call Lord, Lord Dunmore's War. Mm -hmm. So they're recalled as good Virginians. And I'm 
not mixing up my terms when I say that. When they left, most of them were Pennsylvanians, but of course, <laughs> part of Virginia. So there you go. in Mercer County, uh, or what would become Mercer County, you're now a Virginian. So they make their way back. They fight, uh, or, or they, they tend to fight. They actually most miss the Battle of Point Pleasant, uh, which was the, the only major battle of Lord Dunmore's War. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we've said it before in numerous videos, but this is the equivalent of coming to the moon almost. Uh, that was October of 74. You can't just turn around and say, oh, good, it's over. We'll hop back in a canoe and, and go back. Yeah. Uh, they had to fight, get supplies and preparations, and it's March of the next year before they finally return. And that's when they decide, you know, maybe cabins aren't quite good enough. Maybe we need to build some sort of fortification, and Fort Herod is born. There you go. And, you know, you bring up uh, Boonesboro versus Fort Herod. Th- those those can be fighting words. you got to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's neat because there's a newspaper article from 1841 where uh, you can't blame people. There's no Google back then, you know, but yeah. someone had made the argument for Boonesboro and the people of Harrodsburg had a parade uh, in 1841 to celebrate their heritage so it wouldn't be lost. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you're right. A lot of, a lot of disagreements. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, not just the first there, but uh, first in other ways too. Uh, they have a minister there, John Lythe, uh, minister of the Church of England. And what's really neat is there are a couple of letters from uh, the archdiocese or from the archbishop in, in England, in Great Britain, that mentioned Lythe coming to the Americas. Wow. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of. Neat. But he's you know he's the first minister in Harrodsburg and, and maybe Kentucky. I don't know. I'd have to look at that to be sure. But uh, he moves the settlement in April, and uh, you know things kind of take off from that point. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you, know, you know the rest is history. You know, I guess uh, if you if you want to say it that way, because. Um, and, and more first to, you know, the first teacher, you know, again, can't sell it enough. You know, you need to go to Harrodsburg and check out the fort and all that kind of stuff. Because it's it's a it's really you know, one of the gems of Kentucky when you're looking at, you know, history of Kentucky and also you know American history as well. Because um, that's that push west uh, it is a big thing. And you've got to remember, you know, like you said, the Virginians. um as as that goes and we may get into this in a little bit as well but you know you got boone as well doing the transylvania company and all that kind of stuff going on howard or howard herod and the fellows in what would become mercer county was a big push to not let that happen and uh, you know if that if that was to go then things would change but they were good virginians so that's right <laughs> yeah. uh, um so you know some some of the details here uh, about Mercer County. It, it you know like you said, seventeen seventy four is when Herod shows up. Uh, they go back in seventeen seventy five to start building the fort and so forth. But you know, ten years later, seventeen eighty five is when Mercer County becomes an actual county. Um, it is surrounded by Anderson, Woodford, Jessman, Garrett, Boyle, and Washington. Um, which you know is interesting. Sometimes you you might not think about how close Harrodsburg and Mercer County is to say like Fayette County in, in Lexington, uh, but it's really not that far. And you know Harrodsburg Road in, in Lexington actually leads right to Harrodsburg. <laughs> um, you know it's one of the, one of those interesting word uh, road road things. But um, it's named after Hugh Mercer, who is right. a Revolutionary War general. Um, and uh, I mean that's 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 the basics. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when they adopt that name, they're very proud of him because he, he's killed in the revolution. He's sort of a martyr. He was, uh, Hugh Mercer's knocked from his horse at one point and uh, surrounded by British soldiers and told to surrender rebel. And uh, I think the language they used is probably more colorful. And he draws his <laughs> saber and he says, I'm no rebel. And of course he, he fights to the end. And so they were very proud of that. Uh, and, and you're right. Harrodsburg again, becomes the County seat of Mercer. Prior to that, it is the County seat of Lincoln County which at that point covered all of Southern Kentucky. And then before that was the county seat of Kentucky County, Virginia, uh, which That's was right. basically all of Kentucky. So, yeah, they had a long history of that. And, uh, and at this point, you know, by James Harrod's standards, by the time you get to county, uh, I was going to say countyhood, I don't know if that's a word, uh, <laughs> populations exploded. Because, as you know, you have folks down uh, it, all around the area in, in Stanford. You have uh, the McAfee's 
who have moved mm-hmm. into Mercer County. And so if you if you travel 127 south, uh, before you get to Harrodsburg, you'll see a little road sign for a little community that used to be called McAfee. And some very early settlers there, they were there in the 1770s. And uh, it's really kind of taken off at that point. Uh, you know, and by 1788, you know, Mercer County has built its first courthouse. They've got numerous churches and, and various uh, religious communities represented. And the number of businesses uh, has really taken off. The first female entrepreneur in Kentucky, in Kentucky history, was in Fort Herod. And that was Ann McGinty, who had an ordinary. So it's kind of like a cross between a general store, tavern, hotel kind of deal. Yeah. Um, you know, but she ran that. And uh, so they're up and coming at this point. Uh, we've mentioned before Kentucky statehood just a few years later in 1792. Two years after that, Harrodsburg gets its first post office. And even with statehood, you know, we talk about the conventions that took place. They take place in Danville, but that's Mercer County at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's it's amazing how far Mercer County stretched at one point. There was a, a small neck of land that stretched almost north uh, to Franklin County and uh, as far south as including almost all of Boyle. So it was a lot larger, uh, you know, but time goes on and things begin to change. And uh, so, you know, the fort falls into disrepair. People no longer need it. By 1798, uh, there's kind of a school there uh, in what's left of the buildings. And uh, Mercer County is growing in other ways as well, because yeah. one of the most iconic communities uh, that still makes up, well, it's still a landmark, rather, the community is not there in Mercer County today, are the Shakers, Shaker yep. Village of Pleasant Hill. And uh, the first settlers come in there in 1805. And that's also a neat place to visit. Uh, they've done so much. They've got so many exhibits. And if you really want to see what life would have been like in, in the 18, uh, 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s, all the way up to the antebellum era, man, they've got some neat stuff there. Yeah. A, a shout out to their archive, just because I like research. They have a fully climate-controlled archive. Oh. And I, w- I would dare anyone to find it because it's inside of a barn. Oh. And, uh, the- <laughs> The barn is very old looking and, uh, yeah. you know, it, it matches perfectly with the surrounding. But once you're inside, uh, there's a concrete building and they've got just a fascinating collection and good stuff there. But that's beside. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll point out something real quick, too, um, because you mentioned Boyle County and Boyle County is not formed until like 1842 or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, it's a long time. So, you know, there's there, there's some history of you know Mercer County. The, the, or Boyle County that's within Marcel County as well. Um, but yeah, and also the Shakers, you know, you get out there and check that stuff out. It's, it's right. some some interesting history. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, they, they were probably, anyone from Mercer County, you know, don't, don't kick me out for saying this, but Boiling Springs, James Harrod's home, could have crossed mm-hmm. the line of Boyle County today. <laughs> uh, 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 oh, the <laughs> but yeah, Boyle and Mercer's histories are, are so linked together Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's it's hard to uh, hard to omit one without omitting the other. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, the Shakers are there, and of course, we get another landmark in 1805. We get Morgan Row, and I just mentioned that not to talk about every building that's ever been built in there. <laughs> but that's where the historical society is today, and it's a row house. And for anyone you may not know the term, but everybody would know the what they are. There, there's several buildings connected together, mm-hmm. common during that time. You had a, a common shared wall, and it's the oldest row house in Kentucky. And uh, it's been preserved since the 60s uh, for that reason. It, it's housed the county library. It's housed insurance offices. Mm-hmm. It's just a neat building and, and some private apartments. Um, now, now, when it was built, though, it was homes. People lived in them. Great. Yeah. And uh, the stagecoach uh, stopped there at one point. And uh, you know, so it was kind of right at the heart of downtown. It's one street over from Main Street on a place called Child Street. So, yeah, it would uh, it was a neat place. And, and still is. And there are still private apartments in part of it. Okay. But, uh, but, you know, Mercer County. Uh, well, just think about that. I think that would be like one of the in, most interesting things is you were, if you were to say, yeah, I live over there uh, on Morgan Morgan Row. And uh, you know, my house was built in like you know, 1800. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so, oh, man. That's old. It's real old. How many people you know, have the same problems you deal with every morning? How many people woke up and said, oh, it's Monday and didn't want to go you know, to work <laughs> or the routine? <laughs> generations yeah. uh, which is kind of a neat heritage to have mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know fast forward a little bit you know the war of 1812 something we've also talked about 
quite a bit, so I won't go too deep on that. But, uh, you know, Mercer County's role in Kentucky history uh, continued to remain um, kind of at the center of state politics and things uh, during this time of the early republic. Uh, John Adair from Mercer County leads Kentucky's troops at the Battle of New Orleans in the War of 1812. A lot of Kentuckians, uh, General McAfee wrote a wonderful history uh, that tells the story of the militia pig we've talked about before, Mercer County. Every county in Kentucky has done its duty as far as fielding soldiers when the nation needed it, but only Mercer County has fielded a pig. And uh, we're very <laughs> proud of that. For anybody who doesn't know the story, there were troops were marching off the Battle of the Thames in Canada, and uh, they saw two hogs fighting and stopped to see the outcome. And the hog that won followed them <laughs> and all the, way, all the way up to the, the shores of Lake Erie. And they said, you know, pigs don't travel well, so they would, like, outpace it during the day and, like, it would show up in camp at night. Stayed there till they won the battle and then marched back to Kentucky. So... <laughs> So it's a faithful pig. No. It is, and uh, which is surprising to me a little bit. My experience with pigs is they're kind of surly, but this one apparently was a good American. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a so, good you know, Kentuckian. He, he he knew what he needed to. He knew where he needed to be. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so you know, John Adair will end up becoming governor eventually, anyway. But before him, Gabe Slaughter of Mercer County uh, becomes governor. So, uh, and then one of the more colorful characters. The Mercer County history arrives on the scene in 1820, and that's Dr. Christopher Graham. And Graham buys what was called Harrodsburg Springs. So like many places in the South, there are a number of hot springs and sulfur springs that people felt really benefited your health if you had issues. Uh, and he operates it as a resort until 1853 when he, he ends up selling it to the military. They use it for a soldier's home for a little bit. But it was probably one of the neatest places in Kentucky at the time because he was known for grandeur and he had live bands playing and he had balls and dances and those sorts of things going on constantly. And it was just a center of, um, entertainment. I say commerce. Yeah. Entertainment. And yeah. people social. came. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah social <laughs> events, you know, the, um, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. The gentry of the, of the place. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And not just Kentucky, but all over the South came and visited. Mm -hmm. And there was a description of the ballroom and how neat it was. <clears throat> and it was just a, a fascinating place. Um, the kind of thing you don't see much anymore. So I think a lot of times in movies uh, and things, you know, this, the grandeur of the antebellum South can be overstated. This is one time where it, it wasn't. It's legit. <laughs> uh, and, the building, yeah. and the building's not there anymore. It's... Um, uh, it's a hospital there now, but uh, one of the most fascinating guests who ever came there, uh, their name is not known. I can't remember if we've talked about this before or not, but about the so. young girl, no. who, um, the dancing girl. No. She, we had a, a, a young lady come to town in the 1840s by herself, which is odd. You almost always have an escort. Yeah. And uh, she disembarks from the stage. She has her steamer truck. Trunk delivered upstairs. She signs the hotel register and attends the ball that night. And on the last dance, she collapses. And they, the man she's dancing with catches her and they, they take her up and call a doctor. And she's dead. Oh. So when they open the steamer trunk, there's no clothes in the steamer trunk. They go down. She had signed uh, the register. She had said, told someone she was the daughter of a lawyer in Louisville. Mm -hmm. And uh, they could never find a lawyer in Louisville by that name. And so no one knows who she was. People have claimed they found it out in the past. Oh, man. Uh, the information's not really, uh, or, or the evidence is not really convincing. So they yeah. buried her there on the grounds of the hotel. And you can visit her grave uh, at, at Young's Park in Harrodsburg. And so while the hotel itself did not last, she remains. Wow. Hmm. That's a... <laughs> That sounds like a pretty awesome story. <laughs> it's on. <laughs> oh, yeah. And there have been debates about whether to exhume her and, and try to do DNA. And then uh -huh. the town kind of decided, you know, she deserves her privacy. It's been this long. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, but there's a marker on her grave yeah. and you can go see it. And it uh, says something to the effect of bow your head. You're on hallowed ground. You know, something of that nature. So yeah. 
Um, so how, how old how old was she i mean do they know or i mean they, they always call her a young woman so they don't say i would assume though in her maybe early 20s is the way they it's been made to mm-hmm. sound yeah, yeah but they've okay. never actually said so it, 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 it's a fascinating story and why lie about your identity you know did she have tuberculosis and she had come seeking treatment yeah. was it something else hard to say mystery in harrisburg but, it is. It's neat stuff. And then uh, to shift gears a little bit, and, and a very shameless plug on my part, Harrodsburg gets its first library in 1823. Oh, hey. So, I'm visiting the library. <laughs> hard to That's right. Hard to follow her up, you know, at that point. <laughs> but, uh, it, it really was a happening place. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, the, the uh, there was so much going on, and so much of that still resonates. Uh, we talked about how uh, Graham Springs doesn't survive. But one thing that does survive from the same period is the county fair. Mercer County has the oldest county fair, oldest uninterrupted county fair in the United States. Uh, wow. Which is kind of neat. So even during COVID, you know, when you couldn't let crowds in, uh-huh. they found a way to do events safely so they wouldn't break that streak. Uh-huh. Uh, so also something that, that's kind of neat. And, uh, <laughs> By 1833, they had a resident who was an ambassador to Columbia. So the U.S. ambassador. Oh. So, you know, the, the 30s and, and 40s were kind of a, a big deal for Mercer County yeah. and uh, yeah. its population. And the the, yeah, adjust <laughs> Which, my light here for a bit. Uh, one yeah. thing I kind of wonder sometimes, uh, you know, with, with like Mercer County and, and, or, and Harrodsburg being you know, the first – which I guess it's probably a big political thing, you know, because Danville was the capital of Kentucky for, for a brief time. Um, you know, I, I just wonder why they didn't roll with Harrodsburg and say like, it was the first County or first, first town. Let's just make it the, but cause I mean, it's not too different located than Danville and, and, and so forth, but you know, I don't know. That is no. a good question. And especially because the people who settled Danville, the Crows who, who hold the land first, John Crow was one of Herod's men. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, there, there's a connection there, and I don't know if it was closer to some of the settlements to the south by the time they got yeah. around to it. Um, but I've, I've always wondered that too. Yeah, someone else can solve that problem <laughs> or solve that <laughs> mystery. <laughs> we need an impartial judge there because I'm curious myself. <laughs> I wish it would be bigger at the time. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, that's that, that's another thing I'm thinking. Like, you know, first, you know, first, ta- first town, probably you know, bigger population. A lot of stuff happening. I don't know. I don't yeah. Know. yeah. And Danville, you know, very proudly and rightfully so celebrates their history, their early history in Kentucky because of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, the first jail and, and things like that are, are in Danville. Yeah. Uh, this seemed interesting that the city with the first round of politicians also has the first jail. Uh, <laughs> that's, not what they will. that's not a commentary on Danville, but it's just the politicians in general. <laughs> not yeah. Um, yeah. Well, anyway, moving back to Mercer County, Mercer County. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, Harrodsburg continues to do fairly well. They send some group, uh, some soldiers, a group of soldiers called Harrods Guard, the Mexican-American War. Uh, Daughters College is founded in, in 1855, which is also a fascinating uh, story because like a lot of communities in Kentucky, there are girls' schools. Um, mm-hmm. and there are some for men as well. But Daughters College had something that very few other schools had, had a baseball team. And, oh, wow. uh, so one of the earliest college, women's college baseball teams in the country, I think they missed being the oldest by like four years. Mm-hmm. And we have a picture of uh, one of the teams from the 1860s, and we have their names on a roster. Oh, uh, so that's that's kind of neat. We were hoping they were the oldest. We got digging into it, and it didn't didn't play out that way. No, but that eighteen sixties though. That's that's old. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, that's that's that's. Uh, so, did, who did you know who the oldest was or is or? We, look, we looked it up, and we missed it by four years. I can't remember now, but it was. Man, yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. It's kind of impressive, and you because they're wearing uh, ankle length skirts, and they they had something they pinned their numbers on you, you on your on, on your yeah. chest. Yeah. And uh, it, it's it's a neat photograph to see, and uh, I like to see one of the games. Yeah. But, uh, well, where where's the photograph? Where can you can you go see the photograph somewhere anywhere? Is it? You can view that at the Mercer County Public Library. Yeah. Um, 
There's also a publication that came out, a gentleman who used to work at UK, and it has the photo in it. It's called something yeah. Cattails and Fastballs or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but neat stuff. Yeah, um, awesome. And of course, that leads us in, though, to an era that was rough for Harrodsburg as it was for not just all of Kentucky, but the nation. And of course, that's the period of the 1860s and the Civil War. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Harrodsburg is a divided community. Um, there is a lot of pro-Southern sentiments uh, in, in the county itself. And uh, but enough of a division to cause quite a bit of, of local strife. Um, you know, in, a lot of people are just trying to survive. John Hope Morgan rides through town um, in April, I think, 1862. And while he's there, a number of residents uh, throw a picnic for him and bring mm -hmm. food out for his men. So you think, well, it's a pro-Confederate community. Uh, but, you know, in the fall of that year, the 11th and 19th regiments are raised for the Union, purely of Mercer County men. So like much of Kentucky, it's a very divided community in a lot of ways. Um, but of course, the, the biggest uh, Civil War uh, event doesn't actually happen in Mercer County, but it almost does. And that's, of course, the Battle of Perryville, the largest yeah, battle yeah. in Kentucky. <laughs> and uh, there are people who could speak to this better than I can, but uh, there, was, there was really a great fear that it was going to take place in Harrodsburg because you had the Union coming out of Louisville and you have the Confederates retreating out of Frankfurt. And they're coming at sort of a, a trajectory so that you know they've got to meet somewhere. And uh, at one point, I forget which side sort of drew up uh, in, in battle formation just outside of Harrodsburg and uh, what's now the bypass area. But of course, the battle itself takes place in Perryville. And the one thing I've always wondered, there are publications that say uh, that the cannons in Perryville could be heard in mm -hmm. Harrodsburg. And... Uh, some people have cast out on that, but you know, sound bounces off hills, the central Kentucky yeah. hills, in strong ways. Yeah. And uh, what we do know is when the battle was over, uh, people hitched their wagons and went to try to bring the wounded uh, back to Harrodsburg and treat them where they could. Mm -hmm. And there are stories, uh, you know, of homes being filled and churches being filled with uh, the wounded and the dying. Yeah. And uh, the, the one church that wasn't was the um, Episcopal church, which just had uh, new windows put in. And so they, they preserved that church, but they did ring the bells and call people to prayer um, at St. Philip's, you know, in the aftermath of that. It was just a pretty horrid thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you, yeah. To kind of see... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. You prefer. I, I was going to say, you know, the, the distance is not that far. You know, when you think about going from uh, Perryville to Harrodsburg, I mean, it's, it's you know, 20 miles, maybe most. Yeah, maybe um, that. It's less than 30 minutes to get there by car. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, there has been, you know, Stuart Sanders has been on talking about Perryville and all that stuff. And, um, but, you know, that, that you're right, man. It could have very easily, you know, met in Harrodsburg and, been a completely different story because you know Perryville wasn't a town really hardly at all it wasn't really even a you know much of nothing but uh uh but you know if they met at Har Harrisburg that's a bit more of a issue especially if they were if you know when it was you know shooting these cannons off and everything else going on could have really damaged a lot of stuff you know <laughs> absolutely so, uh, and you wonder if Harrisburg had had more water flowing through it you know Doctor's Creek is a big attraction for the soldiers at Perryville. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Interesting. Well, uh, you, you mentioned the um, John Hunts Morgan too, but you and, and that that shines light to say, oh, maybe they're they were pro Confederate. But you got to remember, John Hunt Morgan is kind of you know running running rampage on the whole state. So he shows up in your town. Hey man. Hey buddy. Let's have a picnic. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're all cool. We're all cool. You know. See you later. Have you, you know, your belly's full? Go on. All right. See you later. And then let's get some, let, let's organize some troops and uh, go <laughs> go go fight but, against this guy. You know, <laughs> at the end of the day, your job is to survive, uh -huh. and uh, that's what a lot of people were out to do. And there's actually a, a diary. It was a diary first of a young girl named Lizzie Harden, uh, mm -hmm. who was a teenager in Harrodsburg during the Civil War. And when she get, grew up, she made her her diary into a nonfiction book. You can read it, and it's if you really want to see what life was like in a central Kentucky town during the Civil War. 
Yeah. Uh, it's it's that. And she talks about her family was put under house arrest at one point for being pro Confederate. Uh, she talks about people opening the doors at night and yelling hurrah for Jeff Davis and then slamming the door. And then union supporters would go down the streets looking forward to see who it was. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, you know, most people just wanted to survive, but you had you had a, a few who were very very passionate. Yeah. And to sort of assemble that the era was coming to a close uh, in 1865 as the war's ending, Graham Springs burns down. Uh, so that, that grandeur of Harrodsburg, uh, you know, is gone uh, with the end of the Civil War. Yeah. Which, which but, is pretty typical of many of those spring places that popped up, you know, in Crab Orchard, you had Crab Orchard Springs. There was another one over in uh, towards Garrett County, uh, Dripping Springs. Um, you know, a lot of them, that's what ended up happening. They, they would catch fire and burn. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. It'd be cool if they stuck around, but <laughs> yeah. we're going to pause right there with David Kirk Patrick and continue our discussion about Mercer County history at another date. We want to remind you that the Harrodsburg is having their 250th celebration coming this June. Uh, a lot to check out, a lot to see. Uh, so don't forget to check it out. Go on the Facebook page and many events coming. So try your best to get out there and see some of Kentucky's great history. Uh, thank you again for watching and we'll see you next time. Welcome to the Kentucky History Channel, where we strive to bring you all the Kentucky history content you want and you deserve. Kentucky is a part of all of us, and we plan on covering all the history we can, from Pike County to Fulton County, from Louisville to Harlan. Here on our YouTube channel, you can find many videos dedicated to different events, people, governors, and places in Kentucky. There's something for everybody. While you're here, if you like the channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you get notified anytime new Kentucky history is available. And if you want to support the channel, we have a Patreon page as well or patreon.com slash kyhistorypod. You've probably heard about Daniel Boone, but what about the rest of the frontiersmen who came to Kentucky and settled? That's what we want to bring to the Kentucky History Channel. The stories of the untold, the stories of those forgotten. One thing to expect on our channel is great Kentucky content. Some stories that you've never heard of. The Night Riders, who began in Western Kentucky. Bloody Monday, the riots in Louisville. the assassination of Governor Goebel, the only governor ever assassinated in the United States. Stories from all over Kentucky, stories that are unforgettable once you've heard them. You can find out who counties in Kentucky are named after and how your county got started. From beginning to end, we plan to document every county in Kentucky, all 120. Reach out to us on all of our social media platforms. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And also leave a comment on one of our YouTube videos. You can also check out our podcast episodes. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and many more. We're always seeking to find more Kentucky history so we can bring it to you. The viewers, the listeners, we want all the stories and all the events from Kentucky's great history to be told and shared everywhere.